Hi, today's video is on covalent bonding. This is the first part in a series of a number of videos. The science understanding that we're going to be looking at today is that non-metallic atoms share electrons to form covalent bonds, and a covalent bond may be polar or non-polar. The learning objectives that you'll, know, you'll need to know by the end of these videos is that you'll need to be able to use electron dot diagrams and structural formulae to show covalent bonds and how they bond between the non-metallic atoms. You'll need to be able to use electronegativity values or the position of the atoms in the periodic table to predict and explain the polarity of a covalent bond as well as indicating the polarity of a covalent bond using the appropriate convention. Covalent bonding, well that's a force of attraction when two non-metallic atoms share a pair of electrons, with each contributing one valence electron to the pair. Sharing allows for a stable electron configuration and it occurs due to the atoms having similar electronegativities. Here's an example showing carbon and hydrogen covalently bonding. Notice the full shell of eight electrons, four of which come from hydrogen and four of which come from carbon. So we've got the blue and the red and there we can say eight electrons in that full shell. A covalent molecule, well most substances with covalent molecules, uh, bond, covalent bonding exist as molecules. Molecules within a substance are identical and groups of non-metallic atoms held together by covalent bonds are electrically neutral, unlike our hands, and they're discrete, so they're separate from one another. You can have monatomic, which is one, diatomic, two, or polyatomic molecules, which are three or more. Here we've got some examples of monatomic gases and diatomic gases. So neon will form a monatomic gas. Hydrogen, H2, will form a diatomic gas. The bottom here we have a periodic table and we've got down the bottom here some polyatomic molecules and at the top some examples of diatomic molecules. Electron dot diagrams are what we use to be able to show the arrangement of valence electrons around an atom. They're also known as Lewis diagrams so depending on which textbook you use they may use either of those names. Electrons group into pairs or as we call orbitals. A lone pair is electrons that have already paired up and they're not allowed to be involved in covalent bonding. Here's some examples of some electron dot diagrams down the bottom here. So we have hydrogen, lithium, helium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon. You can see each of the dots that are surrounding the letter of the name, they represent an, a valence electron. Here is the first 20 elements and we would like you to know all of those. So each of those elements are shown here with their valence electrons and they are dotted around. So here we're trying to show what would happen when hydrogen and oxygen bond together. So we've got oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron in the outside shell. Oxygen has six. Down the bottom is where we've got the six electrons. We would fill them in so you would go around one, two, three, four, and then up the top five and to the side six. The reason for that is when we look at the structure afterwards, the water molecule, the two hydrogens have shared their electrons with the oxygens and now we've got our two pairs of electrons down the bottom and here where it's been drawn in as a line one of these electrons would be from the hydrogen and one would be from the oxygen. Same on the other side, one from the oxygen, one from the hydrogen. So we've got, so I want to use some examples here of um, some electron dot diagrams to show the covalent bonding formed in chlorine, hydrogen, hydrogen chloride and methane. So on this next screen we will draw these up. So chlorine is our first one. If we draw a chlorine we've got a Cl and a second Cl. Around this chlorine here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons and this chlorine here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these two here can share and so we end up with Cl bonding to Cl with our pairs of valence electrons on the outside shell. 
The second one we're going to look at is water. So that was given before. But if we do it again, we've got our oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons in its outside shell. Hydrogen has one and the other hydrogen has another. And so you can see there that you've got eight electrons in that valence shell. The next one we need to look at is hydrogen chloride. So this time we have hydrogen with one, chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so you can see again, the two electrons here are being shared. We also want to look at methane. So if we draw our carbon in the middle, carbon has four electrons in its valence shell and each of the hydrogens has one. So you can see when we draw them in, we end up with eight electrons in the valence shell. Now sometimes it's useful to change colours. So you would do something like have hydrogens drawn in as blue. And so then you can see that each of those electrons, four are from the, uh, from the carbon and four are from the hydrogen. That can be useful as well. So before you could see where I was drawing them, I was drawing a little ring around where the, the electrons were being shared. That can then also be denoted as a line. So here we have two electrons in each of our hydrogen atoms. And when they are put together, that gives two in the valence shell. It's shown as a single line between the atoms. On the next one here, we've got a double bond. So if we look at oxygen, um, I'll just draw this one here. So we've got oxygen with one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll change colours this time. A second oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see that this would be one bond and this would be a second bond. And that's what's denoted down here in the box.